You know, I do these episode reviews of TV shows right after I watch the episode. It's sort of like a first impression more than an actual in-depth, intricate review. So obviously, upon first viewing, I'm going to miss some things, whether it be Easter eggs or whether it be a plot point or a phrase or something that was stated that maybe went over my head or I just forgot about. And I've been thinking a lot about Low Key Episode 1, and now after watching Low Key Episode 2... It has really come to my attention that with a show like Loki, I feel like of all the MCU shows we've had so far, including WandaVision, I think this one is one where it probably deserves multiple viewings per episode to really understand. If you think that time travel is confusing, which it can be sometimes depending on what story we're talking about. This low-key show is making things really interesting when you kind of sit back and look at things from a fourth-dimensional perspective. So, what I'm probably going to do going forward is I'm going to keep doing these reviews, don't get me wrong. But when the time comes to go back and do like a full season review when all these episodes are done, I think I'm going to watch them all again, one after another, and really try to... Try to digest everything because there's a lot of stuff that was introduced in this episode and interesting concepts that are kind of a mind fuck you know what i'm saying they're kind of a mind fuck here you know the episode one talked a lot about predestination and the timekeepers and this episode expounded upon that because there's a conversation between loki and owen wilson's character mobius mobius which actually uh just like episode one your enjoyment of this episode is going to be mostly about the chemistry between Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson. And these guys have a lot of chemistry, and they're both very entertaining actors. So I do think that if you like these guys, I think that you'll dig the episode, because really they carry the episode. If you're looking for something that's more like an action, nonstop thrill ride, I would say that the Falcon and Winter Soldier... I would say that show is probably more fit for what you're looking for. This show is a bit more of a slow burn. But I think this show may end up having major payoffs and major, major, major ramifications for the MCU going forward. But, but, here's the thing. We all know that. But here's the thing. The problem is that with what they're doing right now, this could lead to... A, some really good storytelling and some fun crossover stuff and some big events. Or B, and B, maybe you're going to get A and B together. B is plot holes. Because time travel tends to lend itself to plot holes. Like, for example, in this episode, Loki and the Time Variant Authority go to the year 2050 to try to chase down the other version of Loki, the Variant, who's been causing mayhem right and that's all good like that idea by itself is not really a a problem but if the mcu is supposed to continue on the way it's going in this timeline that the time variants i'm sorry that the timekeepers don't want to diverge from then does that mean that any threat of the universe or of the multiverse being in danger cannot be taken seriously because we know that in 2050 everything's okay you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's one of those things where hopefully by the end of this series, they would have not shot themselves in the foot when it comes to this. Now, obviously, the end of this episode lends itself to a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions about where this is going now. I think even more than just with episode one. But also, I want to say back to the whole Owen Wilson, Tom Middleton thing. Yeah, they're very charismatic actors to watch on screen. But I feel like this is not a show for kids, even though they're good at comedy. Obviously, Owen Wilson comes from a comedy background, and Tom Edelson can do anything. But it's one of those things where this show, because of how complex it is and how thought-provoking it is, it's probably not going to resonate with like younger kids. It's not going to be. It's going to be difficult to explain because even for adults, it's difficult to explain. They have a very cool philosophical conversation about predestination where they talk about like okay so if everything's going to happen already then what happens and then 
basically Owen Wilson or, you know, Mobius says, you know, it's up to the timekeepers to write that, to unravel that. And it's just, it, it's very mysterious as far as what that means. Like, are they saying that every event in the MCU up until this point was meant to happen and thus the Avengers were meant to go back in time, which is disrupting the time flow. They were meant to go back in time, take the Infinity Stones, go back to their timeline, do the snap to repair the damage, take the stones back like Captain America did, and then of course, you know, I guess fix the timeline for lack of a better term. But the minute they took the stones away from the past, wouldn't that have then created a branching timeline? Now it appears like, based on the end of this episode, there are multiple branching timelines, which I feel like should have already been the case. See, it's, it's very confusing because there should have already been multiple timelines. The fact that there even is a, a, another Loki already lends itself to there being multiple timelines. Now, for those who don't know what's going on, the character revealed at the end of this episode is one character known as Female Loki who I think started around the late 2000s. I think 2008 is when Female Loki was a character that was created for the Marvel Comics. They had this, like, cat-and-mouse chase where Loki's trying to help the TVA find his alternate version of himself. He calls it a lesser version of himself to stop all this nonsense with the time variance and whatnot, what's going on with, with, with timeline getting all messed up. And then they kind of reveal in the episode that only a like if you go to the past and, and try to change something, if it happens, and I may have misunderstood this, so please forgive me, please. If it happens right before a cataclysmic event where people die and whatnot, it won't change anything because the event happens anyway. So if I go back in time, just an example, right, before Pearl Harbor. And I show up at Pearl Harbor, right? And I go in there and I start throwing things around and, and shooting people, let's just say, right? And then Pearl Harbor happens and everybody dies anyways. It won't really change the future. But that goes against the butterfly effect. Which, again, you don't have to have the butterfly effect in time travel storylines. But it's still something that I think makes a lot of sense. I see why they went with it here. So Loki discovers where the alternate version of Loki was hiding, which is the year 2050. And it turns out to be female Loki, or lady Loki, as they say. Now, here's where things become kind of head-scratching. The only way for there to be a female Loki, they didn't say her name, and the credits, they list her as being the variant, but it's female Loki. The only way for there to be a female Loki is if there is already an alternate timeline, an alternate universe where a female Loki exists. Unless there was something that happened with cloning or something, even though the sacred timeline has been attempted to be, I guess, uh, kept straight and narrow, there has to be another timeline or another universe in the, the MCU multiverse where there is a female Loki. Because otherwise, how did this female Loki exist? Unless it's going to be one of those predestination time loops to where female Loki created herself by creating the alternate timelines, but there has to be a starting point. This is why time travel storylines are very difficult to do because time travel storylines with time loops and time paradoxes, you can stay up till 5 a.m. trying to figure this out. And actually, it is 5 a.m. right now as I do this review. You know what I mean? But uh, you know what I mean, right? You'll stay up all night and all day trying to figure out this time travel stuff because it's confusing. But, I mean, am I crazy here? Like, there has to be another timeline that the TVA is unaware of. Or maybe they are aware of it and they didn't say anything. Maybe they're keeping it a secret where this other Loki is from, this female Loki. Now, in the comics, if I remember correctly, they revealed that female Loki or lady Loki is actually part of Loki's personality because... They did say Loki was gender fluid in a um, in a press release before the show began, so that may have been a teaser for this. But at the same time, it, you know, we don't really know the origin. It could be that Lady Loki's a part of Loki, you know. In which case, where did that where did the Lady Loki part of Loki split from Loki? Was it during Ragnarok, and she just happened to have left at that point? You know, Thor Ragnarok, like in the comics, or was it? at a different point in the timeline that we haven't seen, like an unseen timeline. The thing about this show, guys, is that what's going to keep this show going 
is the intrigue behind it. That's what's going to keep this show going. I feel like when all is said and done, if we go back and watch this show in maybe a year, maybe six months, it may not have the same impact because what's carrying it right now, besides just the charismatic actors in it, is the intrigue that we don't know what is going to happen. And because of that, I'm hooked still. Like, I'm still interested, but I'm also cautiously optimistic because if they're going into the future that we haven't seen yet in the MCU, that could end up damaging storylines that they're going to be doing after, you know, for Phase 4 and beyond. I'm curious. I'm very curious if this is how they bring in mutants. And, you know, this is basically the stuff that we were kind of wondering about with WandaVision. You know, are they going to do the multiverses, Mephisto, there, all that stuff. We're getting that here. You know, because at the end of this episode, it seems like there are multiple timeline surges or splits, I guess you could say. Because she was stealing all the time reset um, devices or whatever. So, she was going around killing off TVA agents and stealing the TVA reset devices. But how does she know what they are? You know, it's very interesting. It's very... I'm interested. I hope they don't screw it up. This is a very easy storyline to screw up. I hope they don't. But we'll see. Overall, I did enjoy the episode, but I really am more excited about where they're going than anything else. And I do like seeing these actors on screen. So a thumbs up for the episode for sure. But I'm just sitting here thinking about where this is going. And how it ties into like Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and all that stuff. I'm wondering. Because it looks like based on the end of this episode, the timeline splits and it... It's almost like it's split throughout the timeline. So there are multiple different timeline splits going on. Like multiple different timeline splits within the main timeline. So you're going to have splits at different parts of time. So what does that mean? Can that be fixed? Do they have to call in Doctor Strange and the Infinity Stones? The Infinity Stones were rendered moot in Episode 1 of Loki. So what does that mean for the future? A lot of unanswered questions, yo. I'm sorry if I'm rambling in my review. It does have me thinking, and it does have me curious about where it goes. But I did enjoy the episode. What did you think? Let me know, and I'll catch you in the next one.